Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And within just the last few hours, we have learned new information about a plane crash that claimed the lives of four people from Connecticut, including a 15-year-old girl. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Bridget Yorlo. Tonight, we're learning more about the victims, the plane, and the investigation. Here's Fox 61's Matt Karen with the latest. Well, at least three of the four victims are connected to the Middletown school community, where today they brought in extra counselors and even therapy animals to help people cope with this tremendous loss. For 55-year-old Paul Pelletier, an aerospace teacher at Middletown Schools. It's my pleasure to help the first responders make their job safer. Aviation and education were one in the same. Oh, this one hits home. It's really sad. So when the ill-fated flight Paul piloted crashed Sunday in a wooded area of Vermont, those he taught... I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Paul. ...knew they'd lost a friend. He cared about people. He cared about his students. One of those students, 15-year-old Delilah Van Ness, a sophomore at Middletown High School. She died with him, along with her mother, 55-year-old Susan. Middletown schools with a statement in part, this unimaginable loss has left a void in our hearts and our community. It's always sad when, when this sort of thing happens and it happens too much with these small planes. Paul and Delilah were familiar faces to Fox 61. We spotlighted a segment about Paul's drone and flight class at Middletown High School, bringing public safety to new heights in June. It's win-win. When you can get the kids and the first responders and everybody's learning, um, that's, I think that's what education is supposed to be all about. I do the classroom part, so I'm more of the information side. And then we grade them so they know how they're doing and what they need to work on. You see, Paul ran a unique program where his students became the teachers helping to certify Middletown first responders to fly drones. We've worked with Paul for over two years now. He helped pretty much develop, it, develop and get our drone program off the ground. Little is known about what caused Paul's single engine Piper to plummet from the sky. The NTSB and FAA are investigating, but we know they took off from Wyndham Airport Sunday morning and landed safely at Basin Harbor Airport in Vermont. They had lunch, but on their way back to Wyndham, Shortly after takeoff, something went wrong. The wreckage found just a half a mile from the airport. He was a great man. He had a great passion. He had a great drive. And he really gave that message to all his students. Also killed in the crash was 88-year-old Francisco Rodriguez of Lebanon. Middletown High School will be closed tomorrow. The Vermont State Police told us that that plane never indicated there was any problem, never sent out a radio mayday. It's also worth noting that as passionate as Paul was about drones, it was ultimately a drone that discovered his plane's wreckage. Reporting in Middletown, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Matt, thank you. Our coverage continues on fox61.com and our free Fox 61 News app. There you'll find the latest on the crash investigation and how the victims are being remembered. Let's turn to the forecast now. It is a beautiful start to the work week. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frain joining us now. Rachel, it's going to be a beautiful most of the week, right? Yeah, lots of sunshine straight across the board. And if you like early fall weather, you're really loving today, tomorrow. But if you are not ready to give up on summer just yet, we got that for you too as we head towards the end of the week with a gradual warming trend. Here's a look at the numbers across the state, including right around 70 for Wyndham, for Putnam, 74 in Hartford and mid 70s for the New Haven area. No issues if you want to fire up the grill, enjoy some time on the deck patio, go for a walk with the dog. But we are watching this area of showers and storms. It won't be storms by the time it gets here. However, there is a chance for a shower overnight tonight, mostly after midnight. And a lot of that will kind of break apart as it moves in. So you still need to water the lawn and garden in the days ahead, especially with how dry the forecast is looking. Lows tonight in the 50s to right around 60 degrees. Another comfy, cool start to the day tomorrow, but a bright, sunny finish. We'll take a look at that weekend warm up coming up. Thank you, Rachel. New tonight, Governor Ned Lamont just announced within the past hour he is formally requesting a major disaster declaration for last month's catastrophic flooding. Lamont is specifically requesting the approval for Fairfield, Litchfield, and New Haven counties in the individual assistance program. 
And that's the program that reimburses homeowners and businesses for some of the costs of repairing damage. In his letter to President Biden, Lamont said there were 19 homes destroyed, nearly 200 suffered major damage, and dozens of businesses were also damaged. And tonight we are getting a closer look at the progress being made to dry out homes at Job's Pond. Water levels have receded significantly since water pumps began working over the Labor Day weekend. They are diverting groundwater from the pond to the Connecticut River. Senator Richard Blumenthal visited people living in the area today, many of them grateful that their basement and yards are no longer under water. Senator Blumenthal helped secure more than a half a million dollars in funding to help address the flooding issues. And after that historic flooding in southwestern Connecticut last month, attention is now being focused on areas that are prone to flooding. Flooding frequently happens in the north end of Hartford due to sewage overflowing when water levels get too high. Now the Connecticut Justice 40 Alliance is calling on state leaders for more funding. The group wants the state to comply with the Biden administration's Justice 40 mandate mandate, releasing 40% of federal infrastructure funding to make permanent repairs. Over the years, there's been more money poured into repair efforts. Crews were contracted to replace pipes underground to help with the sewage system. More than $170 million were put toward that repair and prevention effort, but the Justice 40 Alliance says the work has been inadequate. That devastation was caused by maybe a foot or two of water in a stream. In the north end of Hartford, we're talking about the north branch of the Park River. Uh, that needs to be dredged. If it's not dredged, we are at risk of, in the next, the next storm, it becoming a situation like it is in Oxford. Advocates say the project would cost around $50 million. New tonight at 6, we now know the name of the 14-year-old student killed in a dirt bike crash. Police say Carter Jones, a ninth grader at Suffield High School, was riding a dirt bike when he crashed into a sedan. It happened at the intersection of Copper Hill and Woods Hollow Roads. It's still unclear tonight if the driver of the sedan was injured. Police are still investigating what caused the crash. Counseling services are available at Suffield Schools for any student in need of support. New tonight, an update in the IVF lawsuit brought by dozens of women against Yale University. Three years after the initial suit was filed, the case has finally been settled. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst spoke with some of those women, and she joins us now in studio. Emma? Brent, Bridget, since the lawsuit was filed, more than 150 women have come forward accusing Yale of failing to safeguard its fentanyl supply, which allowed a nurse on staff to swap that drug with saline. Three years later, these patients say they finally feel like their voices are being heard. My pain was real and my voice was disregarded. Sori Ellis Henry is a nurse practitioner. Five years ago, she sought in vitro fertilization treatment at Yale's Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility Clinic, also known as Yale REI. Henry prepared herself for what she thought would be a hopeful and joyous time. She says what happened at her first egg retrieval was anything but. It was traumatic. During the procedure, I felt everything. I waste my pain. I was visibly crying and the doctor said I shouldn't feel anything and I told him I was feeling everything. She wasn't the only one. Yale made me doubt my strength, made me think I didn't have enough to give. And that was until the day I found out my pain and trauma wasn't actually my fault. These women are all part of a lawsuit against Yale University for mass painkiller diversion. The 2021 suit claims patients had fentanyl used to manage pain during egg retrievals switched out for saline by a nurse during procedures. I was completely at their mercy. I was forced to muster up the strength to survive the second, third, fourth, and fifth retrievals just so we had a shot at creating our family. In 2021, former Yale nurse Donna Monticone pleaded guilty to stealing fentanyl intended for these fertility patients. She was sentenced to serve four weekends of incarceration, three years of supervised release, and three months of home confinement. Monday, attorneys announced Yale University reached a settlement. The 93 women patients stood together in solidarity, and they said to Yale University in this case, Enough is enough. 
The settlement amount is confidential, but these women say this acknowledgement of their trauma by Yale is better late than never. Together, we have made our voices heard. And together, we demand change. The attorneys today also noted as part of this settlement, Yale's updated their policies and provided new safeguards to protect future patients. I did reach out to Yale, but have not heard back. Bridget Brent. All right, Emma, thank you very much. There was extra security at Meriden School today after a concerning social media threat surfaced over the weekend. A student mentioned bullying on Snapchat, saying Edison Middle School was next. That student has been arrested and charged for making a threat and breach of peace. Meriden police officers were on school grounds during the school day today to ensure everyone they say were safe and they felt safe. The district has not yet said whether or not that elevated security will continue throughout the week. We're learning more details about what led up to last week's deadly shooting at a Georgia high school. That's right. It comes as the community continues to honor the four lives lost. Fox 61's correspondent Steve Harrigan has the latest. A makeshift memorial growing outside of Appalachia High School on Monday, honoring the four people killed in last week's shooting. It comes as new details raise questions about efforts to prevent the attack. Following a Washington Post report that the 14-year-old suspect's mother called the school on the morning of the shooting to warn of a, quote, extreme emergency. Prosecutors say she is not involved in the case and has been cooperating with the investigation. Only the teen and his father, Colin Gray, have been charged. The 54-year-old is the first parent of a school shooting suspect to be charged in Georgia. We've got to work from the inside out to stop these mass shootings. How do we do that? We hold irresponsible parents like this guy who's buying an AR-15 for a 13-year-old. Legal experts say prosecutors will likely focus on the 2023 visit to the family's home by police after reports the teen allegedly made threats to shoot up a local middle school. So the degree of that evidence needs to be robust enough, uh, and it's all factual, to convince a jury that this was a real, um, a real threat and a real danger and that you should have taken action. Appalachia High School remains closed following the shooting. Police are crediting this newly installed panic alert system for likely saving many lives that day. An educator that is wearing one of these, uh, recognizing that there's a critical situation, in this case, an active assailant situation, is able to create uh, really kind of that silent panic or A grand jury hearing in the case is scheduled for next month. In Atlanta, Steve Harrigan, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.